Hello and welcome again to this video about making another game. This time we will build Brick Breaker using Pygame. Without further ado, let's jump directly to the code and start coding with me. As always, I start by importing Pygame library, initialize it, set up the display and its name, the width will be 800 and the height 700. in the main loop and run a for loop to check if the player wants to close the window. that set up the clock for 60 frames per second The colors that we will need in our game, they will be based on RGB values. And we will need to fill our screen and update it. For creating the class of Pado, this time I will create it in a separate file and then import it to our main file. I will do it to keep our code more clear and structured. For this we will need to import again our library and the variables that we will use like the color variable, the width and the height of the display. For creating the class, we will call the constructor at first, and then we create the variables self.image, which will be a surface of 120 in width and 20 in height, and self.trect to control our image, and we will need to draw the surface on the screen with pygame.draw.rect. We will draw it first as 0, 0 coordinates, but we will change it later. After that, we will need to instantiate it and add it to a group of all sprites in the game.
To control the paddle, we will create some methods in the paddles class like move right. What you should keep in mind, and what we explained in the previous video, the reference 00 is in the top left corner of the window and not in the middle. So to move right, we will increase its x coordinate by 5 pixels, and to move left, we will decrease it by 5 pixels. After that, we will check the button right or the button left if one of them is pressed. If it is true, we will call one of the methods according to the button pressed. I will change the pixels to 6 instead of 5 just to make the puzzle moves a little bit faster. We will create the class of the ball similarly to what we did with the puzzles class. I will create it in a different file and save it in the same location of the main code. I will also import the library pygame and the variables that I will need in my class. After that we will call the constructor and create the two variables as always the self.image and the self.rect. The image will be also a surface with 20 pixels in width and 20 pixels in height. I will create a method of initial position, so to use this method each time we restart the level or the game. To make the ball move, we will need to add the velocity which has two vectors, the vx and the vy, 
I like to make their values randomly and we need to add these values respectively to the both coordinates x and y. Something else that the ball needs is to bounce according to x axis or to y axis. In other meaning, we need to invert the sign of the velocity when the ball hits the walls or the edges of the display. Before moving to the next part, let me make the game starts only if we press the space bar in our keyboard. Again, the easiest way to create bricks is to create a class which is like a mold and then generate a lot of bricks from that mold or that class. We will not need to create any method for this class. I will create a separate group of sprites only for the bricks. We will need this especially, as you will see in the next part of the video, to handle collisions with the ball and the bricks. We will instantiate the bricks. But it will be a little hard to instantiate an object of bricks and give it position manually like for example if we want to create 50 bricks it's a little bit hard and not practical to copy past the code and change the position manually 50 times 
Therefore, to solve this issue, I will create for loop to instantiate the bricks. To duplicate these bricks in multiple lines, I will add another for loop to change the index of the lines. As a good practice, I will make all of this in a function with two attributes, number of columns and lines. And I will call the function each time I need to generate a number of bricks. In this game, we should manage two types of collisions. First is when the ball collides with the puddle and the second one is when the ball collides with the brakes. Starting with the collision of the ball with the puddle, we should first detect if the collision occurs between the puddle and the ball or not. If it is the case, then we should check which side of the ball and puddle collides and then make the ball bounces according to that side of collision. The second type of collisions is between the ball and the bricks. So we need to check if the ball collides with any of bricks by calling the method that sprite collide, which returns a list containing all the bricks in a group of all bricks that intersect with the ball. The last argument, which is boolean, we will make it in false because if set to true, all bricks that collide with the ball will be removed from the group. The thing that we don't want because we need to make the ball bounce according to Y after hitting the brick. I forget to place the ball at its initial position each time it hits the bottoms instead of the puddle. Let's test our program. Perfect. I will add the score and the lives. We will declare first two variables, score and lives. For score, I will assign to it 0 and for lives, I will assign to it number 3. If the ball breaks the brick, we will increase our score value by 1 and if it hits the bottom, we will subtract 1 chance from the lives. Then we will display the score and the lives in the screen.
good. Now I will display a game over message on the screen if the player runs out of all the chances or the knives and limits its value to not go inferior to zero. So in case the player wants to replay the game again we should reset the score to zero and the lives to three. Let's test our program. It works for the score and the lives, but the message displayed only a few seconds and disappeared, so let me correct this first. Let me adjust its position. Let's test our program once again. Now we need to restore all the bricks if the player chooses to replay the game. For that we will call our function init bricks. issue here is that we create some new bricks above the older ones in other meaning we need to remove the older bricks and create new ones we will resolve this problem by creating a for loop where we will kill all the bricks and after that we will call our function of init bricks to regenerate new ones Nice. 
adding sounds with Pygame is made by Pygame that mixer that sound and you add the path to your sound in your computer. play the sound we call the name of the variable when we stored our sound and the method dot play I added only two sounds, first one when the ball breaks a brick and the second one when you miss the ball. As an exercise for you, could you add another two sounds when the ball hits the left and the right edges of the display and when the ball hits the puddle and then share them with me in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you for watching.